Tennessee School for the Blind educates disabled kids from kindergarten through 12th grade. In fact, it's one of the few schools actually run by the state, but now it is under fire. Former teachers are coming forward, making troubling accusations. State lawmakers are asking questions. Possible public hearings could be in the works. What's going on? Channel 4's Dennis Ferrier has been investigating. Well, the school has lost half of its teachers in just two years. A large group of specialized, dedicated teachers. That statistic alone demands the question, what in the world is going on? The Miracle Worker is true inspiration, the story of how Annie Sullivan taught Helen Keller to live and be productive. It changed Norma Engelhart's life. At age 10, I wanted to be an Annie Sullivan to somebody. And so she did, teaching at the Tennessee School for the Blind for 39 years. She wanted to teach even longer, but retired in protest. I care about those kids. I love those kids. And they deserve better than this. As a teacher, Kathy you're Chilton, not. visually impaired, wheelchair bound. She was married yeah, to that yeah, school first as a student, K through 12, valedictorian, and then 25 years as a teacher. She just retired too. Miserable. I felt unwanted, um, mistreated. They are both part of an alarming statistic in a field where dedication is the standard, where a 40 year teaching career is not uncommon. The Tennessee School for the Blind is hemorrhaging teachers. These teachers that left a lot, it was uh, in 2013, 245 years of teaching, teaching experience walked out the door. All those teachers were endorsed and uh, had years of teaching experience teaching the blind. The teachers that replaced us, there were eight teachers that were new hires, and of those, none of them had any experience uh, teaching the blind. And I wrote the governor a letter in September of 2013 in hopes of preventing what just happened in 2014 with so many people leaving. Even the state admits 31 teachers have left in the past three years, 50% of the staff in just the past two. Engelhardt says the problem started when school superintendent Dr. Martin Monson was appointed to run the Tennessee School for the Blind. That's when teachers started leaving. That's when she said it became his way or the highway. We're doing good work here for kids, really is, I think is what it boils down to. Um, we've got, we have the data to back it up and it's uh, um, great for kids. Dr. Monson points to three straight years of growth, not just ninth grade English scores, but growth in other subjects as well. But as critics say, he is missing the human factor, that four of the six blind teachers have left. And the price of losing blind teachers at a blind school, hard to calculate. I love being a manor. I, I got to tell them, yes, I know it's hard to be away from home, especially the ones that lived in the cottage. I was there, you know, to say, I did it too. And, and let's look at the benefits. Isn't it nice to have Braille or our large print or our listening devices? And I did it. You can do it. You know, you're, they're encouragers. Uh, yes, it is hard work. And yes... It takes more notebooks for us to put all our papers in and organization. You got to keep working at it. And um, yes, you got more weight in your backpack and things like that. But you know, that's all about, and we do have to work hard. I said, if, if you want to become a teacher like me, you are going to have to put a lot of extra hours in. But you know, I said, if you believe in something, you, you're dedicated to it. Chilton says she and other visually impaired teachers were targeted by the administration. She retired only after she was told she was on the verge of being fired. About 25 years. Now two thirds of the visually impaired teachers gone. Sometimes people who are visually impaired are the best teachers for kids. Sometimes they're not, just like um, people without vision impairments. Sometimes um, Mrs. X was the best teacher that you could hope for, sometimes she's not. But, so. but isn't there an added value, and I'm not even discussing whether these are great teachers, is there not an added value of having someone sitting up there in the teacher position saying, you can do this, look at me, I did it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. and, do you, and, and is that not have an intrinsic value that is worth keeping? Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. These problems have caught the attention of state lawmaker Darren Jernigan. These children are of some of the most vulnerable in our state. Um, uh, required by law to have a free and appropriate education for them as well. And I'm, I'm, my concern is that they're not getting it. All these things are happening at once in the past two years when this thing was r running like clockwork for the past 30 years. And so uh, it, it, it's, it's a great concern to me. 
it's imperative that we have a hearing, flush all this out. And we are not done here. Tomorrow we look at why a principal making $96,000 a year was provided a free home by the state of Tennessee on campus. Also, you'll hear a young blind counselor's story. She says her dreams were crushed at the school. That's tomorrow night as we continue our investigation into the Tennessee School for the Blind.